namo tassa bhagavata arahata samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavata arahata samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavata arahata samma sambuddhassa buddham sarana gachami dhamam saranang gachami sangha saranang gachami last time we were discussing about the mind and we were talking about the fact that there is no such thing as a mind we have only a body and what we call the mind are three activities of the body and we also pointed out that uh, modern uh scientists have been experimenting on the brain and divided the brain into parts in terms of how the brain evolved and uh, and in this description of the evolution of the brain they have even come to realize that there is a part of the brain which when fully developed becomes like the brain of the buddha so they are even talking about the buddha now and even the brain of the buddha there is a book written by some of the scientists and the the title of the book is the brain of the buddha so you see so they have recognized the importance of the buddha and to practice buddhism means to develop our mind to a high level which means to overcome the animal part of the brain and to develop the human part of the brain and even go beyond the normal human to a super human level so this is why what is commonly called the noble eightfold path is really i translate it as the super normal eightfold way that means the purpose of the buddha was to bring the normal human being to a super normal level that is the meaning of becoming uh, an arahant or a buddha so today we are going to talk about 
what is called the paticca samuppada now this explanation of the paticca samuppada is a little different from the common explanation because the common explanation that is found today is not the original teaching of the buddha the original teaching lasted only about 100 years after the uh, parinirvana of the buddha and after that our uh, interpretation of the teachings have deteriorated and that is why today we have this the important thing here is that uh the deterioration of the teachings has resulted in talking about karma and rebirth because today most buddhists they think that the important thing in buddhism is karma and rebirth <laughs> so that is the mistake the teaching of the buddha is not karma and rebirth the teaching of the buddha is what is called the four noble truths is talking about dukkha the cause of dukkha the end of dukkha and the way leading to the end of dukkha dukkha means all the problems that we have as human beings and all these problems come from the wrong way of thinking now what that means is as we said earlier we have this mind in the form of the animal mind and the human mind so we are most of the time dominated by the animal mind the animal mind is the emotional mind the mind that is either desiring things or hating things or becoming frightened of things or worrying about things so that is what our normal mind is most of the time we are unhappy so it is by overcoming or transcending that animal nature and becoming fully human in developing the human part that is the meaning of the practice of buddhism or the real teaching of the buddha so when we understand the paticca samuppada we begin to understand or see our life in a different light that is the important thing so the first thing to understand is when we are born we are born 
with a body. So everyone knows that to be born means a body comes out of the mother's womb. So we are born with a body. And this body alone, there is no mind here. That's the important thing to understand. And uh, only thing is that uh, there are three activities of the body that we refer to as mind. We mentioned this earlier. So, we'll be talking about this. And the most important thing is to understand that we have a body and in this body we have eyes, we have ears, we have a nose, we have a tongue and the whole body becomes uh, an organ of perception, which is the sense of touch. So, uh, because we have these five senses, anything happening in the environment affects these senses. Now when we say light comes to the eye, light comes in the form of electromagnetic waves, that is what today the scientists have discovered. So that means that is a disturbance in the environment which comes and affects the eye, which means it stimulates the eye and the eye reacts to that stimulus and that is what we call seeing. It is simply the eye reacting to the stimulus and when we hear a sound, that is also a disturbance in the environment and that comes to the ear. And so we hear it as a sound. When we smell something, again it is simply another disturbance outside which affects the nose and so we get the smell. When we speak of a test, again it's something disturbance in the uh, outside in the environment and it affects the tongue. When we touch something, there is also disturbance in the environment and it affects the body and we feel the touch. So, what we call seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, That is what is called perception. Eye perception, ear perception, nose perception. 
टंग परसेप्शन एंड बॉडी परसेप्शन हाउ इट इज बिकॉज दिस परसेप्शन दैट वी बिकम अवेयर ऑफ अ थिंग कॉल्ड an environment or we might call it the world or or various other things in the world we become aware of these things because it affects these senses sensory stimulation so to become aware of the world we must have these five senses if we don't have the senses we won't become aware of anything so if we become aware of a world then we see things that means it is an activity in the body that made us aware of what we see and hear now the what we call the patitya samuppada is an explanation of what happens that means from a state of not knowing anything we begin to know something if we take the eye from a state of not knowing anything if you are in the dark you don't see anything it is because light comes and falls on the eye that you begin to see and when when you see what do you see is important to understand that our eyes work like a camera now if the eye works like a camera what does the camera do taking pictures so when we see something what we see is a picture and uh, when we see something we are seeing pictures and when a camera takes a picture where is the picture the picture is inside the camera it's not outside so when i see things whatever i see is not there but here but normally we think it is there we think it is there especially because we have two eyes ha ah, if you close one eye and see only one you see it one eye you are not able to see the depth that you are aware of the depth comes because you are having two eyes so this is why 
today they they have uh, uh, pictures with show depth that is because they are able to they call, we call it the three dimensional figure so what we call a three dimensional figure is a figure where we see depth otherwise we see only just the picture so um, the important thing is there is a sanskrit saying which is a saying uh, we find with the the brahmins of india but this is really although they they are using that it is coming from the buddha and that statement is tat tvam asi tat tvam asi they they say it very quickly say tat tvam asi they say tat tvam asi that is tat tvam asi tat means that tat means that tom means you asi means a ah. in other words what that statement means is you are that now what does that mean that is the object that you see outside this is here that is there no? so what we call that is the, what is outside tat tvam asi means you are that that means what you call that there is really here you see the buddha is called tathagata you may have heard this word what is the meaning of that there again the same word is coming tat agata tat means that agata means arrived at agata means arrived at the buddha is the one who arrived at that that means he is the one who understood that what you see there is really here you have understood the meaning of that what all this means is that the world that we are aware of outside there is a creation of your mind that the world that we are aware of which we think is outside there is really a creation of your mind you see the modern scientists they have been uh, trying to understand what is called matter 
that is what the the science called physics and chemistry that is what they're talking about what is called matter and not only matter they are talking about another thing called energy so two things they are talking about matter and energy so although they talk about these things matter and energy now they are beginning to realize they have started the thing called quantum physics now in this quantum physics what are they beginning to realize that this thing called matter and energy are really coming from your own mind it is only now that they are beginning to realize that it is all in your mind what we call matter and energy they are also getting into this tattva masi you see the most important thing is how this thing is happening all the modern philosophers and philosophy is going on they are now talking about these things if you study the history of philosophy you will begin to understand that these philosophers have been talking about this trying to understand these things and uh, what is going on now nothing <laughs> 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 so the important thing is that people are gradually beginning to understand these things how the buddha has been explaining this in various ways in various sutras and uh, so this patichcha samuppada is when we have understood this we begin to see how our mind is creating the world that we are aware of now to understand this the buddha this jin just sit under a tree and think and philosophize that is not what he did what he did was he he began to purify his mind to purify the mind is to free the mind of these emotional excitements it is the emotions that disturb the mind and uh, prevent us from understanding the truth about things so what the buddha did was he calmed the mind the mind that is emotionally agitated was calmed down 
and by calming the mind he came to a state called the first jhana what is jhana now people use this word jhana but sometimes they don't understand what they're talking about it is very important to understand the word jhana now jhana i have translated this word jhana it is i call it ecstasy ecstasy is a very important word which is also badly understood because badly interpreted ecstasy comes from two parts ek means outside ek means outside stasi means to stand now if you go out of this room and uh, stand outside that means you open the door and go out and you stand outside that is called ecstasy standing out now here the ecstasy here means that we stand outside the emotional world to free the mind of emotions is to come out of the emotion and stand outside so ecstasy means standing out of the emotional world so there are four ecstasies the the emotions are seen in the form of uh, five things they are called the pancha nivarana the five disturbances the nivarana word nivarana can be translated as disturbance so the five disturbances so you come out of the five disturbances then you have what are called the f- five janangas jananga means the constituents of the ecstasy that means the ecstasy is composed of five parts that standing out has five parts they are what are called uh, वितक विचार फीति सुख एकाग्रता वितक विचार फीति सुख एकाग्रता वितक विचार विचार रिफर्स टू क्वेश्चनिंग एंड वितक इज इन्फरेंस दैट मींस यू क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज दिस एंड देन यू से ओ दिस इज अ कप so that questioning that is really forming a concept so when we question what is this and we say this is a cup we have formed a concept the concept called cup 
we have created. That is conceptual thinking. So what we really call vitakka vichara is conceptual thinking. So there are conceptual thinking can be good as well as bad. Conceptual thinking that can arouse emotions is bad kind of conceptual thinking. So the conceptual thinking that calms the mind is a good kind of conceptual thinking. So what you have here is the good kind of co formation of concepts. If you say this is a cup, there is nothing wrong with that. Or if you say this is breathing in, that it doesn't produce any emotional agitations. So, in this particular kind of breathing, we think only this is breathing in, this is breathing out. This is relaxing the body. Now, thinking like that is good thinking or forming concepts. Now, in this first ecstasy, we have this kind of good thoughts. Now, in the second ecstasy, this is a process of giving up. You are giving up first, you, what you gave up was emotional thoughts. Now you are giving up even the calming thought. That means you are stopping conceptual thinking. Then what is left is a kind of happiness a happy state of the mind. And with the happiness of the mind, you also feel the body relaxed. The relaxation of the body. And the mind is not disturbed. It is the stillness of the mind. So the next step is to give up the, the thinking part and you are left only with the happiness, comfort, which is the physical comfort, the mental happiness part, the physical comfort part, and the stillness of the mind. Then you are in the second ecstasy. Now you give up that also. You give up the thinking, the happiness part, and you are left with comfort and the stillness. Then, then you are in the third ecstasy. Then you give up the comfort also. That doesn't mean that you become uncomfortable. You get into a neutral state. And when you give up the comfort, you are left with stillness. So, with the stillness, there comes another part
उपेक्षा दैट मींस योर माइंड इज फोकस्ड ऑन व्हाट इज गोइंग ऑन इनसाइड Upper ikkati. Upper means inside. Ikkati means seeing the inside. What is the inside that you see? When you are looking at something, when you look at something, what you are looking at is outside here. when i look at the cup the cup is outside here not inside then what is inside what is inside is the looking so the looking and what you look at looking is how you look at so there is the how you look at and what you look at so in other words your attention goes to the process of perception your attention goes to the process of perception and when it goes to the process of perception you are able to analyze the process of perception you see it in its parts and the parts are what the buddha called the pancha khanda pancha khanda is really the constituents of the process of perception today it is translated as the five aggregates that translation doesn't convey the meaning properly but if you say the five constituents of the process of perception then you begin to understand what that is the five constituents of the process of perception what are these five constituents first the image the image is called rupa the word rupa means image because you are seeing an image and then you begin to find out what are the constituents of the image now if i look at an image and look what are the constituents of the image now if you draw a picture what how do you draw the picture you take a white board or white uh, paper or whatever and you use a colored pen and paint the pictures so the picture if you try to find out the constituents what you could see is a color so it is made of colors the picture is made of colors and the colors can come in uh, you begin to feel the color that feeling is called vedana and seeing the color is called sanya 
So this is why Vedana is the feeling, Sanya is the sensation. Sanya is the sensation which is the color and the color can be beautiful or ugly or neutral. So color can come in the form of the the you begin to feel in three ways. Either it is pleasant unpleasant or neutral. So that feeling is the Vedana. And the color that you see is the Sanya. So there is Rupa, which is the picture. Then you have the Vedana and the Sanya. Then you also have another part which is creating the picture. You put the colors together and create the picture. That creation is what is called Sankhara. So I translate it as construction. Sankhara, the word Sankhara means construction. You are constructing a picture. And uh, then there is another thing that happens. Not only constructing the picture, you are also identifying what the picture is. If you say, oh, this is a face, or this is the tree, you are identifying the picture, giving a name. You identify the picture by giving a name. Now, if you look at this and say, this is a cup, you are identifying it as a cup. And that is the meaning of vijnana. The word vijnana Today, translated as consciousness, it's not really consciousness, that is perception. To perceive is to identify what it is. <coughs> so you see, the process of perception is analyzed into five parts. And it is that way that you begin to understand. Although you see a picture, you are becoming aware of the process of perception. So this is a very important thing to understand and it is by understanding this that you begin to understand what is called the Paticca Samupada. So when the Buddha started uh, what is called the ecstasy, that is standing out. You are, as you begin to stand out, you begin to see how the mind is creating these 
thing. It is by ecstasy. It is like the, that perception that we are aware of, we understand like uh, climbing a flight of steps. So when you climb a flight of steps, you have to give up the first step to get into the second step. And you have to give up the second step to get into the third step. And you give up the third step to get into the fourth step. So it is a process like that, that you gra gradually give up these things and that is how you begin to really see how you have been creating this whole picture that you are aware of, becoming aware of the world. And there is something more than just perception. Now the first stage is not knowing anything. You start with not knowing anything and then when you open your eyes you see something. And how you see is what you are looking at now and then you begin to see that you are First thing that you see when you open your eyes is color. <coughs> and you put the colors together to form a picture. And having formed the picture, you identify this is a face, or this is a tree, or this is a flower. You see, that is the identification, that is the perception. So, that first starting point is not knowing anything. And that not knowing anything is what is called avijja. The avijja is not knowing anything. And from that not knowing anything, you construct the image that is Sankhara. Avijja Pachya Sankhara means from a state of not knowing anything, you begin to construct. Sankhara Pachya Vijnana. Having constructed, you begin to identify things. Vijnana, perceive things, perception. And once you have perceived and identified, what you have done is you have created a mental image and you have given a name to it. So the mental image is called Rupa and the name you give it's Nama. So it is called Nama and Rupa. Nama is the name. Rupa is a mental image. You see? <laughs> and not only that, it doesn't end there. Although you have Rupa, it's only what you have seen. Now when I look at this and say this is a cup, I'm not sim simply seeing a picture here. I know when I touch it how it will feel. If I put my mouth into that, I know how it will taste. So all these different senses I am using, 
This is why to a small child you give something. The first thing the child does is to touch it and put it in the mouth and uh, smell it and use all the senses. Using all the senses, you are ge getting different aspects of this sort of thing. And that is what is called Salayatana. The six Ayatanas. Salayatana. Sala means the six. Ayatana means the six. The senses, the sense uh, feels, six sense feels. So it's six aspects, the six aspects. And so you, to get a full understanding of the object, you have to not only use your eyes, you have to use your ears, your nose, your tongue, and uh, touch, everything. So, this is why avijja pacha sankar, sankar pacha vinyanam, vinyana pacha nama rupam, Namarupa is a name and form, then Salayatana. You are using all the senses. And having got all the senses, now you have seen an object. You are thinking of an object which is existing. So you see it as a object that is existing, not just a picture. When you see it is an object that is existing, you are not only seeing it as a picture that you see with your eyes, you have seen from all the senses and then only you begin to see it as an object. And seeing it as an object is what is called passa. That word passa is normally translated as contact. This is not contact. This is complete understanding all aspects. And that is what is called Cognition. Cognition or recognition, recognition. You have recognized or recognized. <laughs> so that is the meaning of cognition. So passa is not contact but cognition. And once you have cognized, that means you have seen and understood in various ways, another thing happens. That the feeling comes there and you begin to feel that object is good looking or whether it is ugly or it is pleasant or is it unpleasant you feel it and once you feel it what happens either you desire it or you hate it that means you are emotionally reacting to what you saw. That emotional reaction to what you saw is what is called Thana. That is what the word Thana means. Today it is translated as 
craving this is not craving it is the emotional reaction to what you saw or heard and touched hmm that's the important thing your emotional reaction is tanha craving means something else <coughs> if you if you are used to taking some kind of drug and you you can't give it up you are craving it's not a thing like that this is simply an emotional reaction to what you saw that means there are three kinds of tanna kama tanna bhava tanna and vibhava tanna so kama tanna is your reaction to what is pleasant bhava tanna is your reaction to something neutral and vibhava tanha is your reaction to what is unpleasant bhava means let it be that means a neutral sensation if it is a neutral sensation you are not desiring or hating it you just let it be there but if it is something unpleasant you want it to not be there that is the meaning of vibhava bhava means being vibhava means not being so you don't want it to be there because it is unpleasant so if it is pleasant you want to get it so tanha is three ways of reacting to what you see so it's not just craving yeah can you really explain about the kama tanha what kama tanha kama tanha it's not kama don't put, call it kama because that is another word okay. m okay. this is kama okay. not kama it you have to pronounce it that way kama <laughs> so kama is desiring something pleasant that is your reaction to pleasant things is kama your reaction to unpleasant thing is vibhava not being and uh, your reaction to neutral things is bhava now another interesting thing happens when you react you see you you first you saw an object but now you are reacting to the object now when you react to the object the object is outside and where is your reaction the object is outside and your reaction is inside so you are creating your you are dividing your experience into two parts as objective and subjective that experience has been divided into an objective and a subjective 
and w- once you have created the subjective what has happened you are saying this desire or hatred is mine that is you are personalizing the subjective to personalize is to say this is mine so the moment you personalize what have you done how can there be mine without a i <laughs> the moment you say mine you have created the i all this time you didn't have a i now you are having a, an i which is yourself you have created the self but the moment you have created the self another thing happens a question comes up what is it that you call the self can you show the self the moment you ask that question you have to find an object and find an object that exists to refer to as by self what is the object that exists the only object that exists is the body so it is the body that you get told of and say this is myself so the body becomes the self all this time there was no self now you have created the self and by creating the self it is the body that you have called yourself and that self that object has to be something that exists and what is being existing means what does existence mean to exist is to occupy space and time ah <laughs> to exist is to occupy space and time now body is the thing that occupies space to occupy space is to have length breadth height and weight also <laughs> so the only thing that you have in that way is the body but there is another problem coming up the moment you have called the body yourself body is not only occupying space it is also occupying time to occupy time means to have a past present and future and what is the past the past is birth past of the body is birth the future of the body is death and between the birth and the death is the aging and sickness so now you have not only created the self and begin to call the body the self 
you have created birth old age death so you have created birth old age death means you have created suffering how did you create suffering by calling the body yourself if you didn't call your body yourself you won't be having birth you won't be having old age you don't you won't be having death that calling the body the self is what is called sakhal ditti sakhal ditti is calling the body the self but what is this body that you are talking about have you seen your body you have not even seen your body if you want to see your body you have to go in front of a mirror you have not really seen your body you you but you have feel you big even you close your eyes and you can feel the body so in other words what you call the body is a collection of feelings and sensations and sights and things like that you put all these things together and you form in your mind a thing called body you have never seen your body properly this is why if someone takes a picture and shows you the picture oh this can't be myself it doesn't look like me <laughs> because the self that you have in your mind is different from the self that you see in the picture is all a creation <laughs> so this is why the buddha said sankittena panchupadana khanda dukkha this thing called suffering is simply a collection of this uh personalized constituents of the process of perception you have simply <laughs> taken all these constituents of the process of perception and you have created a self and it is that self that you are talking about so it is to understand this properly when you begin to understand it you begin to see that you have there is no real thing that you have to worry about these are all creations of your thinking you are not even doing the thinking it is happening to you this is not something that you have done it's all happening there is not even a you to do things the you is also created by you <laughs> <laughs> you so i hope you have understood 
and <laughs> so if you have any questions you can ask we are now Huh? Ah. You're always having questions, huh? Good question yeah. for you, huh? <laughs> Since you're teaching at that, that means every person here uh -huh. can reprogram their image according to what they want. True not? What's that? Since you are teaching of this, yeah. you are personalizing yourself, right? You are personalizing yourself could be yourself or some other people program you. True uh, now? Uh -huh. So now you don't like what you are. You look at mirror, you are not happy, you are fat or you are skinny, right? You are not happy, you no money. So, but if you say you want to change to what you want, to be happy, you know, handsome, money, anything, eh? you can reprogram yourself. Can or not? What you are teaching, what you are reasoning? Well, yes, you, you, you can. You can reprogram, mm. but the thing is, everything is a program. <laughs> yeah. So it's not but a real reprogram, thing. Then reprogram yourself first. Now. Then your process will transform to that. That you become a happy being. Well, yeah. Can or not? From you, what I see you teach, yeah. yes, it can. It's all made up in your mind. Yeah, you program it. <laughs> yeah. If you say suffering, then you suffer. Uh -huh. If you choose to be happy, you program to be happy. Yeah, you program yeah. to be yeah. beautiful, you mm. program beautiful. If you want to be rich, you program to be rich. You can have it all. Can you not? Yeah. That's why I want to come. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Uh, Pante, I want to ask you, with what kind of uh, meditation practice can you see this yourself? Can you? What kind of... Uh, process? Huh? What kind of meditation practice do you need to do to see Oh, that is what is called the Noble Eightfold Path, which I call the Supernormal Eightfold Way. So we have to go and uh, talk about this another day. It's a long story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> huh. Last time you asked that question, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we'll have to have another day to talk about how to get out of this. Huh? Pante, just now you were saying vijnana uh, is a, the meaning of vijnana is perceptions. What? Vijnana. Vijnana. Uh -huh. The meaning is perception. Meaning of Vinyana. It's yes. perception, not consciousness. It's perception. You ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I will talk about that. Uh, That's an important question. Yeah, my, my question is huh? that you were saying that currently the vinyana is wrongly translated as consciousness. Yes. Yeah. And it should be perce perception, in fact. Right? So. No, uh, no. The, with. Just wait till I explain that. Okay. <laughs> okay, M my question is that. Huh? Um, you have it, another question? No, no, it's about this yeah, vinyana. Huh? Yeah, b because in the Chinese agama, it is also uh, being explained as a consciousness. So um, perhaps Bante <laughs> explain further, then we can understand. <laughs> no, Bante, uh -huh. what he means is, what she means is, traditionally, Vinyana is translated as consciousness, even yeah, in the, yeah, in, even yeah. in the Chinese yeah. agama. Uh -huh. So, but Bante translates as vinyana, which you are going to explain now further. Yeah, that's okay. what I am trying to explain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
You see, the important thing is uh, this vijnana, the word vijnana has uh, different aspects of vijnana. That means we have five senses. These five senses seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, <laughs> all that is perception. But there is another kind of vijnana. You see, from these different senses, nerves go to the brain. Optic nerve, auditory nerve, olfactory nerve, like that, those different nerves, these are like telephone wires carrying messages to the brain. So when that message goes to the brain, the brain begins to think. There is a special part of the brain that does the thinking. Now that thinking, that is called mano. The Buddha called mano. So when all the different senses bring all the messages to the brain, the brain begins to think and give meaning to what was seen, heard, smelled, tasted, touched. That is called Mano Vijnana. That Mano Vijnana is the real consciousness. The real consciousness is Mano Vijnana. And the others are perceptions. So there is a difference between the perception and consciousness, which is the activity of the brain, the thinking brain. So if we want to use the word consciousness, that the Real word for that is Mano Vinyan. So this was not understood by the original translators. This is the problem. Huh? What's that? Dasana? Anidasana. Ah, Anidasana Vijnana. You are... Apatita. Huh? And Apatita Dasana. There are two more Vijnanas. Huh? There are two more Vijnanas. Anidasana Vijnana. Yeah. And Apatita. Apatita. Apatita Vijnana. The two, two other forms. Apatita. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, those are... Could you explain, Bhante? Huh? Could you explain a little on this as well? Well, can explain. Only thing is, uh, uh, it's a little uh, different from these other uh, vijnanas you're talking about. The What is called the anidasana vijnana is the vijnana where you don't see anything. There are no objects in that vijnana. That means that is the vijnana of the arahan. Once you have understood the paticca samuppada properly, that creation of the world by the mind or the mental process is not taken as a real thing. 
So once you have taken it off, your mind becomes silent and uh, you don't uh, see anything as real. You see, it is like The, now, there is a sutra called the Mula Pariyaya Sutra. If you read that, there the Buddha talks about this. That means uh, uh, we'll take an example. Say we have a mirror here. We have a mirror here. And we bring a bird and put in front of the mirror. What do you think the bird will do? Ah, it will start pecking at the picture there. Why? Because that mer bird thinks there is another bird here on the other side. Now you take the bird out and put your face there. <laughs> what will you be doing? <laughs> you know that what you see in the mirror is not another person. <laughs> Why? Because you know how that picture came into being. It is your own face that is reflected there. So you have understood better. So in the same way, the ordinary person sees some object, thinks there is an object there. But the Arahant or the Buddha sees how that picture is formed and therefore doesn't come to the conclusion there is something there. It's like that. That is the Anidasana Vijnana. So that is the meaning of Anidasana Vijnana where nothing is uh, taken seriously. So we bring this to an end today. We have come to the end of our time.